Hey guys, how's it going? I am bringing you a tutorial today for the Tack of the B Team mod pack. It's made by Technic Platform. You can visit them at www.technicpack.net. It has how many? 113 currently mods, and they're always adding more. Every update they add something. But this is a list of the current mods. Oops, let me get back to it. And I believe these are only the mods that you can build stuff from. I know there are some UI mods, all these different things. But I think these are the ones that you can only build stuff from. But that's alright. So, if you noticed, we start off with a different inventory screen. We have three different... Well, we have three different... I guess inventory sections. The last one is Galacticraft. This one, I think it's Tinkerous Construct. I don't know. I'll find out. We'll learn together. And even this inventory screen is different. We have 170 pages of blocks, doodads, any sort of object you can think of in Minecraft. Now, the cool thing is, if you are in survival with no cheats or anything, you can click on these anything you want, and it'll give you a recipe. So the rails gave me a recipe, this piston. If it's something you have to build together, it's not just a block, then you have to click, you can click and you can get the recipe. Now, you may notice I have four books in my inventory. All but the black one, you spawn with. So let's go through this real fast. So we're going to start with World Domination with Open Blocks. This is a mod that allows you to right click to open by the way allows you to build different things this sprinkler actually works there's an animation and everything you put bone meal in it it does make your crops go faster just like it says there's an elevator all these different things the only problem with the elevator it does take experience but in the back of the book it tells you how to change that in the config file so continuing on the next book What's new in Open Blocks was added when they updated the Open Blocks mod, and then Attack of the B Team, the Technic people for this, for this mod pack, um, just threw this in here to give us an update. And this four, third book, second to last, is Materials and You. This is Tinker's Construct, which we'll start getting into today. It's kind of a big one, but. It allows you to make your own weapons and armor that can, with one hit, could take all of my hearts currently. As you go on, you can add more health and all that stuff. But not only can you customize your own weapons and armor, or weapons and tools, sorry, you can't make, you can make one set of armor. We'll get on to that. My bad. I'm used to talking about weapons and armor. But you can also modify them. And then this last book is once you start building your forge, you get this. It just appears in your inventory. But I'll get into that in a moment. Right now, there is a couple other mods we're going to get to. The first one, we're going to look at our maps. So if you look right now on my screen, I have no mini-map. Hit N. In upper right, appears a mini-map. Hit N again, and you get it in large view. And one more time, you hit N and it disappears. Now, if you want a full screen map, hit M. So N for Nacho, that's the mini map. M for map, that's the big map. And this is just a whole area that I've explored. This is what Biomes of Plane does. It gives you giant snow areas. It gives you volcanoes. I think this is the outback. I'm currently in a tropical mountains. And there's deserts, all sorts of weird, cool things. Now, you can't get Biomes of Plenty without going into the settings when you're creating a new map and changing it from default map type to Biomes of Plenty. It's a few clicks of through. So just take your time, find it, and you'll get a brand new world with a whole bunch of crazy stuff. Which, unfortunately for me, at least, and I'm sure it's the same way with lots of other people, but it, Biomes of Playing is both a blessing and a curse. There's so many cool places to build. And for a builder, that's awesome. I mean, 
you get it, you get to choose where you want. It's kind of custom to how you want it. And my problem is there is a lot to choose from, and that's just that's the hard part. I must have gone through twenty different games, like different maps, just looking, and I got rid of them all. But that's neither here or there. Let's continue. So you may notice we got this red triangle, that's us, and we got this red square. That is the compound as our base. Now you can set up your own square. So what you do is you right click anywhere on the screen and this pops up. And you right click where you want it. So you gotta be careful. You type in whatever you wanna call it. So we'll just call it whatever. Hit enter and it goes through groups. You can have player deaths, all these things. And you just keep going through and it gives you the coordinates. You just hit enter and it clears it. Now, there is a way to change this color. I have not figured that out. I think that's in the options or help. It tells you about that. But let's say, oh, we didn't want this anymore. Left click it to, and you get this white border. Then hit delete and it's gone. Easy as that. So as a recap, right click to set it up, left click and delete to get rid of it. And as part of the open blocks mod, if you die, you get a gravestone. Don't worry about that. All your items are in there. If you die and there's no gravestone, then it's glitched out. I'm sorry, can't help you. But it will always give you a marker, one of these things, and just gives coordinates, and that's where you died. So go to that, destroy the gravestone, you'll get all your items back, and you're good to go. So let's continue. The next one, oh, it's night. Let me sleep real fast. So the next mod we're getting into is the morph mod. Now, the Morph mod is really cool. It allows you to transform into any creature. Almost any creature, I should say. Because there's a few in the Witchery that I don't think you can transform into. The Witchery mod, that is. Um, but right now, a good portion of them, lots of different mobs you can transform into. So let's hop into third person and kill us this chicken. Where are you? There you go. Ah, see, now I'm transforming. Kill the chicken, and I'm a chicken. I can do chickeny things. I can squawk at people. I can flap my wings, and that's about it. <laughs> so, if you want to access your, uh, where did I put my signs? If you want to access your morph mod, it's very simple. You take your, you kill a critter or whatever creature, and you use your brackets, which are this and this, to look through them. So let's do that real fast. So we hit our brackets. For me, it's on the right of my keyboard. And it gives us a large variety. Now, I killed a pig earlier just for the sake of a demonstration. I believe if you hit backspace when you have the item selected, the character mod skin whatever you want to call it selected and you can see the one I'm currently is currently morphed into the chicken is in orange the pig that I'm highlighted is in yellow I believe you hit black backspace oh and it works it gets rid of that morph there are some morphs out there some mods like a giant dinosaur mod that we'll get into in the future that takes up a large size of your screen so that's how you get rid of them. But, so I think the left bracket is just scroll up, the right one scroll down, but you can go either way, so it doesn't really matter. If you notice, on my normal skin, there is no little icon in the upper left. In this chicken, there is a guy with a parachute. That means that you have feather falling. You slow fall, you don't take damage. Most flying creatures that can fly, which, by the way, is awesome, won't take damage when they fall. Now, a lot of mobs out there have perks. This one chicken, by the way, is slow falling. Zombies and skeletons, they take damage during the day, as in they burn. So you were just like the normal mob. So you gotta be careful. There's bats, so you kill them, you can actually fly which is just the same controls in creative mode, double tap space to get up in the air or whatever your key binding is. But there's lots of different types of mods. 
like m mobs that have perks and all these things. And some don't. Like that pig had nothing. It was just you looked like a pig. Um, I believe if we... Nope. Some mobs have arms. Like a pig, you'd have a little pig hoof instead of your own hand and all that. Anyway, so let's say we want to go back to RAM real fast. So just bracket your way up, hit enter, and you're back. And let's say we want to make that chicken our favorite. Just because we have a whole bunch of mobs, we're tired of going through the list. Well, it's very easy. Go to your brackets, highlight the mob you want to favorite, and hit the tilde. A little star up here. For me, the tilde is right next to the one on the normal keyboard, not the number pad. So it's a little dash that's a squiggle. So a little squiggly dash. And that's how you get it. And so we go back to RAM here. And now, if you want access to your little favorited mobs you can morph into, hit and hold down the tilde. This ring will pop up. If you let go, it disappears. So hold it down. And then all you do is just mouse over what you want to morph into. And it should highlight. And that's it. Now, say we're tired of having the chickens in our favorites. Go back to your brackets. With your brackets, go back to your morphs list and hit the tilde again on the one you don't want and that gets rid of the favorite. Very simple. Very, very simple. And you can tell if you hold the tilde again, it's not there. So there's another couple mobs, like mods out there. One which is the Natura mod, which these are from. These are berry bushes. And you can tell there's four different types. There's actually more, but we'll get into that in a bit. These four are the Malaberry, Blueberry, raspberry, blackberry. And when you get them, like they grow in normal, like full size blocks out in the wild, and they grow in bushes by themselves, all sorts of things. But when you get them, you can break them and you can plant them. So, like, that's this little tiny block here, that's what it looks like when you plant it. It grows to this full size, and that's like a partially grown, all these things. Now, what the cool thing about these is you can right click them and you get, you get that berry, and you can eat it. <laughs> And you're golden. It gives you a little bit of saturation, not too much. It's like one, it's like half a drumstick from your health bar or your food bar. But they actually grow themselves. So once you lay down one, it'll grow itself in a stack of three. Now, it takes time, but if you wanted to remove this growing blueberry bush, go for it. And it will, like, you can replant that one. And this stack of blueberries will grow another small little bud that will eventually grow into big. They will work their way up to a stack of three. Now, the malaberries are kind of rare. They're found in cold biomes, taiga, snowy forests, stuff like that. They're kind of rare. The blueberries, they're found in temperate biomes. Not too hot, not too cold, not too wet, not too dry, stuff like that. Um, the raspberries are pretty common. Um, I don't know too many biomes that don't have a raspberry bush in them. I mean, they, they're a random spawn, but they're, oh, they're decently common. I think volcanoes, uh, frozen wastelands, deserts are the ones that don't have them, or any bushes of berries, by the way. Um, and then we have our blackberries, which grow in wet biomes, so jungles, swamps, stuff like that. And the cool thing is, is that there's four different types of these edible berries. Now, there's these things called ore berries, which I'll come across later on. What they do is they grow little nuggets of metal. There's iron, tin, copper, aluminum, and gold. So there's five of them. And they don't, unfortunately, they don't reproduce like these berries bushes do. But once they grow full size, they actually start producing little tiny nuggets, which you'll get a range from like one to three of them and you need nine of them to equal one ingot now you take the tinkers construct smeltery and you melt them down and then you turn them into ingot so they're pretty useful there's also essence berry bushes which act the same way as ore berry bushes but the difference being is that instead of metal berries that they produce they produce experience berries that work just like balls of enchanting um, there's also berry bushes in the nether that have some crazy effects like jump boosts, speed boosts, stuff like that. But enough about bushes. We're going to move on to hats. And yes, I did say hats. 
Now hit H. This will pop up. Your hat's inventory. I currently don't have any. Mobs will randomly spawn with a hat. Some do, some don't. Over time, they may lose their hat, get a new one. Sometimes they don't. It's it's crazy. There's about 200, I think, hats. I'm not sure. I know it's in the hundreds. But you can do lots of things. You can collect them. You can trade them with friends. You can customize them any way you want. The thing is, if you're on a server like I am with other people, the person who kills the mob with that hat gets that particular hat. It is not shareable unless you trade it. So it's kind of a race for a hat, but there's so many out there that it's kind of like, oh, you come across a hat, oh, let's kill it. I can morph into that creature creature, and wear a hat. I don't know if you can wear them at the same time, but you get both if you don't have that morph of a creature already. Um, you can search for what type of hat you want. There's anything from a nuclear warhead to a flying pig on your head. It's There's some crazy stuff out there. But when I find some and I'm recording, because I don't want to get any until I'm recording, um, I'll show you what they look like. I can sh go through all these different things. But right now, we don't have any. So just hit done, get out of that. If you have a hat, real fast, and you don't want it anymore, just hit remove hat or select a different one, and then just hit done. But now we're going to move on to... What are we going to move on to? Let's look into our like to-do chest. Oh, so crafting tables, real fast. Crafting tables are now awesome. So, built the same way, four planks up here, you get a crafting table. Well, let's take it one farther. Take your crafting table and place it up here. Now you get a crafting station. And what this crafting station does is kind of special. You take it, you lay it down, and let's say, like, you can notice, there's a chest inventory here. If you put it next to a chest, it gains its inventory. If you don't, let's not do it real fast. Let's lay it down right here. No more inventory. So having it next to a chest is kind of nice because you can just have it as like your build chest. And you can put whatever items in it and you can access them. So let's make, eh, what do we want to make? Let's make a, well, we'll make a sword real fast. An iron sword. Okay, so we have a recipe. Now let's say, oh, we need to go kill this mob because I'm getting shot. So instead of running away and having to come back later to pick up your items, they're not on the ground. They're still there. They're still up here. So it saves them. And the best thing is, say you're playing with a person completely new to Minecraft or any version of this mod. You can put the recipe of what you want to build. Say you want to build an iron sword. Put this recipe in. They can access the crafting table at any time as long as the recipe's there, and they can see this recipe. They can access it at the same time you're accessing it and see this recipe. So it's a great teaching tool. You can, they can add things to it. They can take stuff away. They can select that. But I don't really want an iron sword. I have one already. So we'll get out of that. But what we're going to move on to is working with our smelter. So what we need is and this is going to allow us to melt down metals like ores and make them into tools and weapons this is a tinkerer's construct so what we need is to get these seared bricks and to do that you need clay let me just sand and gravel it's a one to one to one ratio and you can stick them up here in your crafting thing you don't need to put them anywhere special and you get grout so you get two for every one now what you do is you cook up the grout and you get the seared bricks. Now I've already done a few of them and most of these bricks I actually found in a village so you can find them out there but once you cook them you get these, these seared bricks and I'm going to show you how to make all of these and a little bit more. So go to your crafting table with your seared bricks and let's start with a normal brick. So it's easy, it's just a group of four. That's all. But what you need to get a smeltery able to actually melt down metals is a controller. So what you do is you just make a donut. Make a donut with the bricks, leave the center empty, and you got your controller. And what this does is you can, it gives you an inventory section, like once you right click on it, you place all your ores in there, it will melt them down into molten whatever metal, 
and then you can drain them. But first, say we need, but how we access it, we actually need lava. And where we store that is in this thing, the seared tank. And what it is is a donut with a glass block inside. Now it takes, it's 4,000 millibuckets, MB. I don't know what the measurement is. I'm assuming it's millibuckets or megabuckets, something. But it takes four buckets of lava to fill this thing. And that's, I think that's pretty nice. So I already have this in the controller built. But let's say we have all this done. Now we need to get our molten metals out. What we need is a drain. And that's easy. It's number 11 and you get yourself a drain. Now, you can't just access a drain without making some faucets. And that's just the same recipe as a bucket. And you get a little faucet, you place it on the drain, you right click it, and out comes your molten metal and it fills some casting basins and tables. But let's say we don't have any of those casting basins or tables. So let's make one real fast. Oh, by the way, if you have one of your little holders or basins or tables and they're a couple blocks away, make one of these casting channels and you can access them longer distances than just the faucet. And that's just make a U out of your bricks just like this. Very simple. But now we need something to put the metal in. So this is a casting basin. It's just you make a big capital U, if you will. And what it does is it produces blocks of whatever metal. Let's turn down that sound real fast. Sorry about that. So you may know I'm not being attacked at night. That's because I currently have the server on peaceful. That's just so when, until I get my base built, I don't die. And sh so I can show you stuff. But yeah, so this is the casting basin. Uh, it takes nine ingots to make a block. And you can do this with just about any metal. Uh, there's a couple other recipes where you can make, uh, I think, end stone, stuff like that. You can make cleared glass, which we'll get into at a later time. But say if we actually want a table which we can make stuff on. Well, all you do is you s flip the U upside down. You get a table. This is a casting table. This is where you make molds, and you fill those molds with that, whatever metal you want. And then you got the process started for making your tools. So, there's one thing else that I'm going to make, and what it is, is it's a storage system for lava that's built into your smelter. And it's a seared glass tank, basically. There's also seared windows, which are this recipe, and they do the same thing. They just hold their fluids, so you fill it full of lava, and it's right there. I believe it if you put it over the seared, what was it called? The, the thing you put the lava in from the get-go. Um, let's see real fast. This thing, the seared tank. If you put the seared gl glass or the seared window over it, I believe it drains right into it, which is nice. But I'm going to go with one seared glass tank, and I actually need this. So we're going to move on. And we actually have some parts built. So you need your bricks, because you need to build a foundation. You need your controller, and you need your tank. We'll grab the other stuff when time comes. Let's put these books up there, because we don't need them anymore. So what you need to do is you need to have a 3x3 three three hole. Or it doesn't need to be a hole, but you start with a 3x3 three three base. Wow. I have to apologize for the lag. Uh, the computer's not the best. It's a little old. But, just bear with me. So you start with your 3x3 three three base. And then you outline it. Notice how I'm not putting it on the inside block. I'm outlining it. So you outline it in a, another 3x3. Three three. So this is... Let's actually put that on the other side. So, what you need to do with this controller and this con this tank is they can be on any level and the smeltery will work but they need to be on the same level so I like putting them on the ground level so we got our tank there 
and we'll put our controller here. Now, it's not on, so you don't have your inventory, because your, your smeltery is not complete. It has to make a complete circle, and this is, yeah, so you can't access anything in here yet. This is where your molten metals are, and there'll be different layers of different types. You click, you left click the layer you want, puts it on the bottom, and that means you're good to go. You can start creating or pouring or emptying, whatever. So let's complete our donut here. And now you can tell this thing's lighting up. Right click it again, you have an inventory. You can stick whatever metal or sand even to get yourself glass that has no streaks whatsoever um, in here. It will melt them down and they'll be deposited here. Now I only have nine inventory slots. That will change as this thing gets taller. And what we do now is we need to Wow, I'm lagging a bit, so sorry for that. We need to make a contraption, so a drain, that will drain the smelter. So we got one casting table and one casting basin. We have our drain and our faucet. So how the drain works is... Let's try to get up there. All right, so you have to be facing inwards for this to be placed right. It's very position-based oriented. So if you're inside, it won't work. So inside, you have this giant opening, and if you are in here and placed it, the giant opening would be on the outside, which this doesn't work, but if it was, then that would mean everything that's out here that's outside the smelter would be draining into the smelter. Now, you want this little opening on the outside. So you take your faucet, and this is also direction based, and you right click the drain, and now you have a little faucet, which is great. And what you do is you take your casting table, your casting basin, and you can have any number of these drains as long as you have room for your casting tables and basins, and you place them down. Now, you can take, in this one in particular, you can take the casting table, you can take any item, right click it, and it lays it down. And that way you can make a mold of that item. So you unfortunately you can't make a mold of a sign. That was just an example. But you could take a casting basin. I'm not sure if it works. Oh, it does work. But that does no good. So you take your basin. For me, I like to start with an ingot, because we'll get into this a little bit later next video. But you can take an ingot, you can place it down here, you cover this in some metal that's not iron, because iron's useful. Use it for gold, because gold's not entirely useful. I mean, it's part of the recipes, but for this, you can use it as your molds. You right-click the drain, it'll pull it, pour it out, it'll stop on its own once it's full. You right-click the table to get your mold and your item back. And if you want to smelt say more iron bars, place that mold down and right click and away you go. Every time the drain is, every time the mold's filled, it will stop, the mold will cool, the metal will cool and you'll have yourself a new ingot. You right click the ingot and you can start over again. Same process for the basin. It fills it up to the top, makes it a block, right click the basin, you get your block and you're good to go. So, for me, let's actually set this up. I like having my seared glass, my extra tank, on top of the first one. Oh, and it does continue. If you have them over, it does continue down. So, you can destroy it, and it stays the same. Notice how this is the top of the tank. And when I put the glass on it, it's now hollow. Which means I can fill that entire thing up with lava, and I won't have to refill it in a long time. Now, if you don't have a seared glass container or a seared window on top of your seared tank, no worries, it takes a long time for the seared tank to run out of lava. So you don't need to go out constantly refill it. You just need to get your initial four buckets and then every so often refill. But it is smarter to have some sort of storage unit above for lava. But I think, how are we doing on time? Oh, okay. So I think we're right on time. I believe 
me look at my list of to do. Yep, we are done for the day. Thank you for watching, guys. I will see you next time. If you have any questions or comments or ideas for me to, th for me to test out and show you and give you tutorials on, post them in the comments. Let me know. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. See you later.